Hey guys, welcome to Quinia's Budget Crafts. Let's make some easy and practically free fences. First thing you need is pine needles. And then you need a box to put them in. Go ahead and twist all of these little uh, end dealies off. You could do that later if you wanted to, but I find it a lot easier to do that when they're dry. But whichever way you're going to do it, just go ahead and put them in some kind of box that can tolerate boiling hot water. Once you've gotten enough, go ahead and pour in your water. And then leave those to sit until you can comfortably touch them. It's still a bit hot. While that's cooling off, I'm going to go ahead and prep the thing that I'm going to do the fences on. I have a 2 inch thick slab of XPS foam and I've been cutting that 1 half inch thick and that seems to be pretty good for most things I want to do. Of course if you have a proxon or something larger you can cut you know, huge slabs and make tile systems or whatever but these are about the same as the 3D printable tiles as well so that works out really well. Anyway whatever you're going to use for a base or at least a, like a jig to build this on. Go ahead and shove some toothpicks through, like all the way through it, uh, about an inch apart, something like that. They don't have to be exactly perfect. And to keep them from moving around all over the place, I'm just going to go ahead and put a bunch of hot glue on the bottom edge. And then I'll glue this thing to the little platform I made, just to bring it up to about eye level. That way I can see what I'm doing. And now you just start weaving your uh, pine straw through there. You can do a couple at a time, you can do one at a time, you can try to make sure that the pattern continues all the way through, you can put them where it's thinner, however you want to do this, it doesn't really matter, just thread them through, you know, in front of one, behind one, in front of one, behind one. The only thing you really want to, to uh, watch out for is make sure that you don't get a seam anywhere, like if you start on the left side, and the, the pine needle ends in the middle, and then you continue to the right, you'll eventually end up with a big seam there in the middle. And the only time that's okay is if you're going to split it. But otherwise, just keep weaving these in here, and once you get them all done, you can go through and make sure that nothing's sticking out strange or you got some holes you want to fill. The ends of it do tend to be the thinnest on the weaving, so you can make it one toothpick wider than you actually want your fence to be, or you can wrap it back around like a basket weave or whatever you want to do. Of course, you can always just stick some more pine straw in there once you're done, just to thicken it up. So I wanted to try to do these fences several different ways to see what would be the easiest and what gives the best result. So this one that is split, I did not paint anything, I just stuck the toothpicks in there and left them their raw color and then I wove the stuff in and put the basing down. On this one, I put everything in there except the pine straw, did it all in black and Mod Podge, painted it up, did the basing and then wove the pine needles leaving them their original color. And on this one here that we're doing, we're going to weave everything in, do everything in Black and Mod Podge, and then have to paint everything, including the pine straw itself. This is definitely my least favorite method. The uh, Black and Mod Podge is really, really sticky and thick and hard to work with, and it just causes problems. I also don't like having to paint the fence itself. I kind of like the natural pine straw color. But this is one method you can go with. I wouldn't recommend that. But whatever you're going to do, to go ahead and get your uh, glue on there, you can use Black and Mod Podge, or you can just use white glue. If, you, if you're not painting the pine straw with the Black and Mod Podge, you will need to paint it with some uh, watered down Mod Podge or, or tacky glue or any kind of white glue, just to make sure that it'll actually stay. And then once that's nice and dry, you go ahead and snip off the ends, or leave them scraggly if you want to. And then we can clip the toothpicks out of the bottom of this thing. Don't worry about digging into the foam and making a hole. You can go back in and refill that with hot glue if you want to. Then I painted up the whole thing in a nutmeg brown. Let that dry. And then for the uh, fence portion itself, I sort of dry brushed on caramel. And then I used gray with a dry brush and a sponge. Most of the stacked fences where I live actually are gray, like all the wood fences are gray. But anyway, paint it how you want and then put down a whole bunch of tacky glue or Mod Podge, doesn't really matter, something sticky. 
put your flocking down on top of that. This flock is the uh, Geek Gaming Scenix Medium Green Mix. And then I mix some Italian spices in it and a little bit of the um, moss, the Spanish moss from the dollar store. Gives a more even ground cover. Then I sprinkled some mixed sand over it to fill in any spots that I might have missed with the flocking. Put down a little bit more water glue in a few spots and then use two colors of static grass. I do not have a static grass applicator, but this seems to work pretty well as it gives you the uh, patchy color effect. And if you want some taller dead grass tufts, you can do that with uh, like the army painter tufts or little um, pinches out of those cheap chip brushes. That works pretty well. That's what I'm using here. You just super glue them in place. Give all that a couple minutes to dry and then hose it down with some hairspray and let it dry completely. For the fence that I split, I went ahead and took a whole bunch of these fish tank rocks and put them with some glue in the Lego form. It's not going to hold together perfectly, that's totally fine, I don't need it to. Go ahead and bust those into some columns that are about the same height, more or less. And glue them in place on either side of your split fence to make a little... Uh, stone doorway thing. Of course you could do that with foam or any other method, I just like the rocks. So there you go, there's the three different um, ways to go about doing it. Like I said, you could use that XPS for anything really, maybe tiles and stuff. You can flip these around, you can arrange them so that the fence is to the front of the tile or to the back of the tile, you could make them curved. Uh, you could make the end of the tile where the foam is end a little premature of the fence so that the fences will touch each other if you've got like a line of them. And of course if you built a little farmhouse like I did in this video up here, it works really really well with something like that. This hay wagon's a little too big, I should probably uh, model a new one in 3D, what do you guys think? There you go, that's a nice and easy and nearly free way to do some fences for your medieval village. Of course, as always, thanks for watching everyone. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.